Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good. I think I was calling you on the wrong account there, right? Sorry? Did I call you on the wrong account? I don't know. I said accept and then it didn't work. Oh, okay. Okay, just one second here. Okay. Okay, so let's just kick this thing off by asking you how you got the name Cheesecake. Okay, well, um, my first pro fight, I came out to a song called Cheesecake by the Muppets, and everyone started me Cheesecake after that, so kind of stuck. <laughs> hey, cool. And uh, what led a BC girl towards MMA? Um... Sort of a lot of things. A guy I was seeing was a fighter, and I wanted to become a forest fighter, but I was too young. So I thought I'd check it out and get in shape, and my goals in life changed, and I just want to fight now. <laughs> cool. So uh, just talk me through your last fight. Um, I took it on like eight days' notice. It was pretty, yeah, we drove down there. Um, fought, I just went for the takedown right away, I, it's sort of hard to remember everything, because I didn't get to see it all, Right. again, you know, just got to do it, but, um, it ended, like, I had her in topside crucifix, and I was landing quite a few elbows, and the ref didn't stop it, I heard my coach say to go for the arm, so I was attacking an arm when the round ended, second round. Um, I think she stuffed my takedown. I know she was in top guard, landed a couple punches. I went for a umoplata, and then I somehow got back on bottom. She went to throw some punches, grabbed behind my head, so I went for the armbar. Uh, I heard her arm popping, and she wasn't tapping. Uh, uh, ref wasn't stopping it, so I cranked it more. Ref didn't stop it. It popped some more, and then her arm was almost out, so my coach told me to jump on her back, so I jumped on her back, flattened her out, and landed a bunch of elbows. Heard the 10 seconds, so I went for a rear naked choke, and that's how the round ended. And right. then, yeah, the doctor stopped it. She didn't get up after that. Right. So. That's cool. That's cool. So uh, I was on Sure Dog, and I was looking at your record. Um, what was with the uh, two-year layoff in between fights? Um, that's not really to do with me. It's, um, I was training the whole time. I had a bunch of fight camps, and every time I got within two weeks of the fight, my opponent pulled out or the show got canceled or something came up where it didn't end up happening. So I trained my ass off for the past two years and didn't get any fights out of oh, it. Oh, jeez. Paying off now. How frustrating was that? It's really frustrating. It's still hard for me because... When I get told I have fights and stuff, it's really hard for me to believe that it's actually going to happen. Because I've had it where, like, I'm about to fly out, like, two days, you know, in two days, and then I get the call saying that it's not happening. So it's disappointing. Okay, so let's talk about your opponent, July 28th. What do you know about her? Um, I don't really know a whole lot about her. I... I've seen her record on Sure Dog. I know she just lost her last fight. I I just sort of go into fights with my own game plan, and I know I'm going to dominate it wherever it goes, so I'm pretty confident with what I got, so I don't really go into what she's got, but I don't know. That's just sort of how I am. Okay, and just talk about, obviously, the weight cut. Usually, girls don't cut near as much as the guys do, but do you have much of a weight cut? Uh, I got a bit of weight to drop, so I'm trying to do it now rather than right. the day of the fight so that I can make weight and not lose 25% of my purse. Yeah, like, but that would kind of suck. Yeah, so, yeah, it's good when you have the warning, so it makes it a lot easier to make the weight. Okay, and just talk about being on such a stacked card. This card's sick. Oh, you still there? Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear um, me? Yeah. Yeah, and then it went all black. Oh, okay. Um, it's pretty exciting to be on the show. I mean, like, like I said before, I've had so many fights fall through, so it's hard for me to be super stoked that it's going to happen until I'm locked in that cage and the bell goes and I fight, you know. But it's... 
it's huge, like way better than any show I've ever fought on. So I'm pretty excited and really hope that it will actually happen this time for me. Okay, and later this summer, there's going to be a summer classic in Strike Force. We got Ronda Rousey versus Sarah Kaufman. Give me a pick. Well, like I got to go with my home girl from BC. I want Sarah Kaufman to win, but Ronda has those arm bars, and I don't know. It's hard to say if Sarah can keep it on the feet. I think Sarah's going to smash. If it goes to the ground, I think Sarah's probably going to lose. So. Yeah, just sort of has, I don't know, see where it goes. Okay, and we were chatting on Facebook, and you're telling me about your busted nose. Um, just tell me how that happened. Um, I was MMA sparring, and I got hit on the ground, and my nose started bleeding quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> it hurt. Yeah, for sure. Okay, do you want to throw out your Twitter or Facebook? Uh, sure. My Twitter's Sarah Cheesecake, and Facebook, I don't know, Sarah Cheesecake Morris, M-O-R-A-S. Yeah, I guess that's it. Okay, Sarah. Well, thanks for doing the interview, and uh, hopefully we talk to you soon. Cool. Thank you. Okay, see ya. <laughs> okay, bye.